Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com. Welcome to Mastering Luminar 2018. In this Chapter 5 of Mastering Luminar 2018, we're going to talk about LUTs and layer masks. Now first, LUT. What is a LUT? LUT stands for Lookup Table. It's more commonly used in video and film to give that video or film a certain look and feel. You could think of it as kind of a preset. And an example I might give is, let's say you're a director and you're filming a Western, and you have an old Western town, and you want your film to have a feel of like a, a warm, dry, hazy look to the town. Unfortunately, when you're actually doing the filming, it's very cool and blue and bright out, and you, it's kind of the opposite of what you need. Well, you would film like you always would, and then at the end, you digitally enhance the film with a specific LUT that gives you the look and feel you want. The neat thing about Luminar 2018 is it utilizes LUTs. And you could take any LUT, a LUT from, that's meant for video, and use it in Luminar 2018 just fine. And to do that, you would open up the LUT filter. So we're going to go to Add Filters. And down here in Professional, right there is LUT Mapping. Now you click on that, and it brings up the LUT filter. Now I'm going to close down our Filters panel so we have a little more room. And it's very easy to use. There's a button right here to choose a LUT. We're going to click on that. and Luminar 2018 comes with a number of LUTs already. Now, you don't have to use these. You could go out and search the internet for LUTs and, you know, buy a set. They sell them everywhere. Um, I have a set of LUTs that I'm giving away. There's 46 LUTs in my pack. I do ask for a donation, but if you can't afford to or don't want to give a donation, you're welcome to have them for free. Just look below the video if you're watching on YouTube or my website, and you'll see a link to get those LUTs. If you're watching the video somewhere else, just go to my website and search for LUT and you'll find them. Now we could add this LUT. Let's say we're just going to add a, a smoky LUT. And you can see that's the look. It's kind of like a preset. Now we could pick another one. So click on it again and we'll pick a candlelight. Now when you do that, it doesn't like add the LUT to the other LUT. It totally replaces the LUT with the new LUT. Now if you do get LUTs elsewhere, like you download mine from my website, to use those right here where it says load custom LUT file, click there, and you'll come up with this uh, you know, uh, dialog box so you could find the LUT on your computer. Now mine is on my desktop, they're right there, Morganti LUTs, and the specific one I want to use is I think this one. It's a warm with a bit more warm. So we'll use that one. And I really like what this LUT file did for the sky. I think the sky looks great. The water in buildings, um, I like what it did as far as the structure, the, the, the contrast, the clarity, but it is really very dark. So I'd like to brighten those up. Now, if I open up a filter to brighten that, it will affect the entire image. Now I of course can use that filter mask, so I could just mask it so it, use, it will only affect the buildings in the water. But I'm going to show you how to use a layer mask. And if you go up here to our layers panel, you'll see there's a plus and a minus. If you pick or click on this plus sign, you can see there's three choices. Add a new adjustment layer, add a new image layer, or create a new stamped layer. For this video, we're going to do that first one, add a new adjustment layer. So now you see we have the original image down here. That's our first layer, Chapter 5. That's what I called this image. This layer is called Chapter 1. You could rename it if you want. Just double-click on the name, and you could give it a name. In this case, I'm not going to. Now what I want to do, though, is I want to, on this layer, only brighten up the buildings and the water in front. So I'm going to add a filter. And I will just add a develop filter to that. And I'll close that down. And we'll go to shadows and we'll open up shadows. Now you see it's affecting the entire image. I only want it to affect the buildings. So what we're going to do is we're going to get a mask on this layer. And if you go to the right, just like 
uh, the other filters, there is a brush there. If we click on that brush, we have three choices up top, brush, radio mask, and gradient mask, and below that, luminosity. We're going to pick our brush like we did last time for that filter mask. Now we have the mask. You can see it's right there. And we have our brush attributes. We're going to paint in the effect. So we're going to paint with the plus sign. And then we have the size. We'll get a pretty big brush. For the sake of this video, I want to go very quickly. And we're going to have um, like medium soft or so. And opacity at 100%. And remember now, if I click once like that, it really is now applying the mask. So I could now paint in where I want this brightness. Now I'm going to go very, very quickly and totally go over the lines, as they say. So it won't be the best job. I'll get a smaller brush by hitting the left bracket key. The right bracket key, of course, makes a larger brush. So we'll just do this very, very quickly. And then we're going to take a look at our mask and we'll look at all the places I missed, which I'm sure I missed a lot. Get even smaller brush to get the top of City Hall here. Okay, let's click on this little eyeball in the top left-hand corner. And actually, I didn't do quite as poorly as I thought I might do. I mean, it's not great, but... Okay, so there's our mask. We'll turn it off. Now you could see it when I adjust this adjustment. It's only affecting the bottom part. Now, of course, I did, I did a really sloppy job at, up top. Hopefully, you would do better. Now, let's adjust that a little more. Bring that up a little more. Okay, now that looks pretty good. Now... I'd like to finish this off with, say, a vignette. Now, I must caution you. If you're on this layer that has the mask on it, and I want to add a vignette, and I add it to that layer, what will happen is the vignette will only go on that part that is masked in. The rest of it is masked out. So to properly add this vignette, let me delete it from here. To properly add this vignette, I have to go on the bottom layer, then add the vignette that way, and then I could go in like this. Now you can see it does the whole image. And we'll brighten up that middle part like I usually like to. Now I'll go back to the top layer and turn it on, and there's our image. Now, this still comes in handy because we have this mask. Let's say I do want to do... Uh, something else to just the bottom part of the image. I might think maybe the water is just a little too blue. So I'm going to get the HSL panel if I could find it. There it is, right there. We're going to go to saturation. Now see if I pull blue all the way down, you see how it's not affecting the sky. That's because I'm on the layer with the layer mask. It's only affecting the water. So I could pull it down so it looks a little more balanced, like that. And that's our finished image. So now you know about LUT files, and again, you could search for them on the internet. It does, uh, Luminar does come with several LUT files already in it, or you're welcome to download mine from my website. There'll be a link below the video again. So that's it for chapter 5. In chapter 6, we're going to talk about presets and how and why you might want to use a preset. Thank you, everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.